In our previous video, we've created an iSpecimen DAO with a save, search, and a different search method. And we created a stub or a prototype and also a unit test for it. Now in this video, we're going to create the actual implementation. The implementation is going to save this to our database. Now the trick is this. We already have one table in the database called plants, and we want to associate specimens with plants. In other words, a specimen is a specific plant you can touch and take a picture of, where a plant is just the scientific definition of a plant. In other words, it's genus, species, and common name. So, Acercis canadensis, eastern redbud, is the definition of an eastern redbud, but there could be several eastern redbuds that you actually touch or see in nature. We want to relate these two together, and we want to reduce redundancy, so we need to link one table to another. Now, here's the trick. We already have a plants table. We don't yet have a specimen table. And the reason why that's a little bit tricky is, if we take a look at our offline plant DAO, we're going to see that that extends SQLite Open Helper, which is what we need to extend if we're going to write to the database. But the tricky part that I'm alluding to is this onCreate method. The onCreate method is where we put our create statement for our table. That will create our table in the database. In other words, the schema. It won't put data in it. It will just call the create the structure. The trick is onCreate is only called one time, and that is when the database file does not exist. So I can go ahead and make an offline specimen DAO as well, and I can have that offline specimen DAO extend SQLite Open Helper, and I can give it an onCreate statement, but if that specimen, offline specimen DAO uses the same database file, what you see here is plantplaces.db, that onCreate method is not going to get called because I have run this app before and that plantplaces.db file already exists. So how do we solve this? In Android Studio, I'm going to go to Tools, Android, and then I'm going to go to um, Android Device Monitor. We'll give it just a moment here. Now the Android device monitor appears, and I'm going to uh, select the running AVD and go to File Explorer. I need to find the database file and delete it. So I go to Data, and I go to Data again, and I go to my package name for this, uh, for this project, which is this one right here. I go to Databases. And we'll see here plant places db and plant places db journal what i can do is click and then hit the minus key here and that's going to remove these from the device now a couple consequences to think about uh, one is this is on an emulator it's not on an actual device you couldn't do this on an actual device so you have to be very careful and realize that your database schema is difficult to change once you have it actually out in the Play Store and people are using it. That's what the on upgrade method is for that, that we have left alone here, but this is how you would move, migrate from one database schema to another. There again, that's a bit of extra code you need to think about. And so um, it, it might be easier to look at your product backlog, look at your stories that you're going to have, and have the database be a little bit ahead of that. Once you have removed that file, uh, now you're safe to go ahead and create offline specimen DAO. Now, one consideration is that, okay, if I have two classes, how do I get both of the onCreate methods to fire at the same time? Because I, I'm going to have two classes that extend SQLite Open Helper. Well, the answer there is to refactor them into a common superclass. So on my existing offline plant DAO, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say extract and I'm going to say uh, superclass. And we'll simply call this one plant places DAO. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the on create method. Might as well pull up the on upgrade method while we're there. Uh, I will need to also pull up all of the constants that I'm using because those constants are used uh, in that onCreate method. The other ones will be fine to keep down here. 
I choose refactor and now watch carefully what's going to happen. Remember I told you offline plant DAO extends SQLite open helper. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose yes and yes and now take a look. What it says is offline plant DAO now extends plant places DAO. So you see we've changed that. But now let's click into plant places DAO, the new superclass we've created, and you see that this extends SQLite Open Helper. So we've effectively added a class between our offline plant DAO and that SQLite Open Helper. And in that class, we have our onCreate method. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, what can we do from here? Uh, from here, we can create our offline specimen DAO if we want, and we can give that an onCreate method. Now, one trick is it is a little bit dirty to have all of our create statements up here in the superclass. We can use a little trickery with an abstract class to refactor that. Uh, we'll save that discussion for, for just a little bit. For now, I'm going to go to the DAO package, right-click, choose New, and choose Java class. And for Java class, I'm going to say uh, offline specimen DAO. Well, to be honest, I could probably just call it specimen DAO for the moment. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we'll leave it offline and choose OK. And the offline specimen DAO, I'm going to say extends plant places DAO. So you see now they both share that same on create statement. Ooh. OK, and it looks like I added a T in there. Let me rename that. Didn't mean to have that T. Refactor rename. We'll go ahead and remove the T. Okay, refactor. Okay, and you see now that's fixed. Okay, um, it doesn't like this. We're going to have to borrow that default constructor, the same magic we did in the uh, offline plant DAO, because if you remember, we have this constructor where we accept a context and we have to pass the context, which tells uh, which, which talks about our application, where the application lives, where our private directory is. And that private directory is important because that's where our database file is going to live. Uh, then our uh, cursor factory, which we're going to leave at the default. And finally, our database version. I'm going to borrow most of this constructor information. I'm going to put it in offline plant DAO. Okay. And okay, go ahead and import. And I'm going to say... Uh, okay, I'm going to say public offline specimen DAO because that's the way we create a constructor. And now you see my offline specimen DAO is happy. Okay, finally, what I need is I need that create statement. I need to have that create statement that creates the database table. Now we're going to try something a little bit different here. Well, we'll tell you, we'll try it. We'll start this. We'll start the way we've done it before. I'm going to uh, go back up to the super class and I'm going to say plant table. Or let's say plants table. And then down here I'm going to say specimens table. Okay. And I'm going to add constants just as we see here, uh, but I'm going to make those constants for our specimens table. And that will match fairly closely the specimen DTO that we created before. In other words, plant GUID, plant cache ID, specimen GUID, specimen cache ID, latitude, longitude, location, and description. Uh, they're going to pretty closely match what we have here. So uh, offline, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, plant places DAO. I'm going to say public static final string, uh, sorry, string. And let's see, you know, we can, um, well, we'll say, we'll say, uh, we could really reuse that cache ID. That's fine. We could reuse GUID. Okay, I'm going to say public static final string uh, plant GUID equals plant GUID. And so that's the identifier of the plant that this specimen is linking to. In other words, if I go to plantplaces.com, and I search on Eastern Redbud. I'm going to click on Eastern Redbud, and you'll see up at the top we have a plan ID of 83. That's the GUID or the Global Unique Identifier for a Redbud. Now, as we scroll down, we're going to see a series of pictures of Redbuds, and above them we're going to see a little brown bar that indicates where they are. So this is a specimen 
This specimen is at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens, and it's specimen number 20. It is linked with plant ID GUID 83. Uh, uh, here's a specimen at the Kentucky Artisan Center at Berea. That specimen's unique identifier is 834, but it is also linked to the plant ID 83. And you see as we scroll down, here's one at uh, Good Shepherd Catholic Church, uh, specimen 840, and again, uh, linked to the same plant ID 83. So this is setting up what we're going to call a foreign key relationship between the specimen table and the plant table. Okay, now we have the plant GUID. We also are going to have a, a, se a second key. which is going to be the plant cache ID. Okay, plant cache ID. Why do we need two? Well, the GUID is generated by plantplaces.com, and we can get that if we're online. But we have to keep in mind we might be GPSing plants where we do not have a cell signal, and we might see a new plant that we don't have in the database yet. Plantplaces.com has 3,000 plants, but... Um, there are hundreds of thousands in, in the natural world. So we want that capability to add these plants uh, later and possibly offline. So we need an offline ID and an online ID. Now this process is gonna continue. Uh, I'll save you the details. I'm gonna pause the recording. And as I pause it, I'm going to continue uh, to write out each of these constants. And then I'm gonna make a create statement. Once that's done, I'll unpause as soon as we get to that create statement. I've now created all the constants that represent columns for our specimen table. I did add a new one called picture URI. Uh, that's because I have a feeling we're going to want to save pictures to this table as well. Okay, why use constants? We're going to refer to the table name. Ooh, I didn't do one for the table name. We're going to refer to the table name in the column several times throughout our program. And we want to make sure that we don't mistype because we're going to put them in strings so we want to make sure that we are spelling it consistently. And an easy way to do this is with constants. Equals specimens. So I declare the constants here, and then I can use them down in an onCreate uh, statement down in our onCreate method. So I'm going to say string create specimens. And note that this is literally a SQL string. So we have to be unusually careful uh, that we don't introduce any syntax errors because if I were to misspell create table, we won't find it until we actually try to create that table. So create table specimens. And then I'm going to say uh, double quote space open paren uh, and then plus we're going to use the same. We're going to borrow a few uh, column names or column constants from the plant table that we created earlier. As a matter of fact, I'm going to borrow this entire block right here because I know that works because I've already created the plant table. And then uh, enter, and we'll say GUID integer. Again, we're going to borrow a little bit more that we know already works. You could probably refactor this and make it a bit more efficient if we wanted. Okay, so my local identifier, the global identifier, and then we're going to say uh, plant GUID plus space, uh, and we're going to call that one integer as well, integer, uh, comma, space, double quote, plus plant cache ID plus space, integer, comma, double quote, plus uh, latitude plus space, text, comma. Note I'm making that text even though it is a number. The reason is I don't want to introduce anything with a floating point arithmetic. And with GPS positions, the decimals that are far to the right of the point are very important. Okay, longitude plus double quote space text comma plus description plus double quote space text comma double quote space plus uh, and then picture URI and then double quote uh, space text. Uh, and then after text, I'm going to go ahead and put a space and double quote, plus double quote, uh, close paren, double quote, uh, and semicolon after that, uh, close paren, but before the double quote. Finally, terminate the entire string uh, with a semicolon. I do, I, I separate the text and the close paren just in case I want to add any more fields in there. Now I'm going to look very closely at this. 
uh, I'm going to make sure that I have not introduced any syntax errors. So look at my spaces, look at my spelling, look at my open paren, look at all of my commas. Uh, very important, I, I check each of these because if I make a mistake, it's going to be a while before I figure it out. Finally, I put in db.execsql, as, just as you see above. And I'm going to pass it that create specimens uh, string, and I'm going to save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my program, and I'm going to go back to the Android device monitor. And what we should see is our database, uh, our plainplaces.db should be created, and it should have both tables in it. This one won't have any data yet, but that's okay. It should still have both tables in it. I'll pause the recording. It'll take a moment for the emulator to come up. Now our application is loaded, and I've gone back to the Android device monitor, and I see the plantplaces.db. Now, if you've seen the earlier recordings, you know that the plant name pre-populates uh, as soon as you load the app for the first time. So there's quite a bit of data in there that represents the autocomplete that is pre-populated from Plant Places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off of the emulator by selecting the file and then clicking the disk icon. And just a moment. I'll save the file, plantplaces.db, uh, and then choose Save. I've opened up SQLite Browser. Uh, if I, again, I have a previous video that explains this as well. This is on my laptop running, and I'm going to choose Open Database. I'm going to go pick that file that I just saved. Okay, Plant Places open. Now here's the important part. Take a look. Plants table, specimens table. Browse data. Plants, you see all the data that downloaded from plantplaces.com from our JSON feed. But more importantly, specimens, no data here yet, but that's okay. We just want to verify that the table has been made, and it has been made with our columns, and sure enough, it has. So we're good. Our next step then, which we're going to do in our next video, is to consider how to refactor this uh, to take advantage of an abstract class, and also uh, to actually populate it with data. I'll see you then. Thank you.